Welcome to the Iowa Task Force One video training series for Effective Search and Rescue, or SAR. This course is designed to make sure first responders speak the same language, understand their roles, and are familiar with the resources that are available to support successful search and rescue events. In Module 1, we review the basic definitions of search and rescue operations. Module 2 summarizes search strategies, tactics, and techniques. In Module 3, we'll cover search and rescue management and initial actions in different search scenarios. Module 4 outlines next-level resources available to search and rescue teams, such as canines and special technologies. And in Module 5, we'll focus on the U.S. National Grid georeferencing system, how to know where you are and be able to communicate your position clearly. Iowa Task Force One recommends that you view these modules in order, but you're welcome to come back and review any of the modules at any time for additional training. So what is search and rescue? If you think the answer is obvious, keep watching, because there are subtle overlaps between search and rescue operations that often cause confusion. What if a wide area search includes wilderness? Do you know which way to define it? How about searching an urban area after a disaster? or searching a specific collapsed building. What is the difference? Let's start with the basics. Search is the process of locating lost, missing, or overdue individuals. Rescue is the process of removing those individuals from danger and providing medical care if necessary. A wilderness search is defined by the natural environment in a large geographical area. We typically know who's missing. Whether it's one person or a group, we know the exact numbers and identities of the individuals we are searching for. Wilderness searches are very unique. Uh, you never know what you're going to get into. Wide open areas, very dense vegetation, and all groups, sizes are always a possibility. As its name suggests, a wide area search also covers large geographical areas, but it's usually in response to a major disaster incident. Another main difference is that we usually don't know how many individuals are affected in a wide area search. These searches can be performed in urban or rural areas affected by disasters such as a tornado, like the one that struck Parkersburg, Iowa in May 2008, or the large explosion of the fertilizer plant in the city of West Texas in April 2013. Wide area searches often require a large variety of resources and can overwhelm local resource capacity. We'll cover many of those next-level resources in Module 4. The West Texas explosion was in an urban environment with structures. However, that event encompassed a large area, which made it a wide area search. Urban search and rescue, or US and R events, typically involve one or two structures in a confined area. These failures can be caused by natural events such as earthquakes or floods, or they can be man-made, such as explosions or structural collapse. US&R typically involves detection, location, rescue, and initial medical stabilization of victims in a structural collapse. For further search and rescue training, contact the National Association for Search and Rescue, or NASAR, and TEKS, the Texas A&M Engineering Extension Service. Many SAR forms and tools can also be accessed on the iowataskforce1.org website. View Module 2 in the Iowa Task Force 1 training series for information about search strategies, tactics, and techniques.